All the time. All the time. God is good. Can you hear me over there? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, good morning. Good morning. Sisters and brothers. I praise and thank God for allowing me to glorify Him today. And all honor and glory belongs to God alone. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm so humbled and blessed when I received an email from Sister Corey last April asking me to sh if I can share how I met the Lord personally and what He did in my life. Um, when I surrendered my life to the Lord, Jesus Christ, my life became colorful. And for me, uh, every day I feel like I'm in a movie. There's drama, there's uh, comedy, there's action, and sometimes there's horror. Every, when I surrendered, but before that, my life is just like blah. So, now, um, actually this day was just a vision. What I'm doing now was a vision. The Lord showed me this thing that I am talking in a different language when I was in the Philippines. Because this English is my second language. And I met the Lord when I was in the Philippines. So, uh, that was some 30, 25 to 30 years ago. So um, my name is Maria Rowena Andres, but I go by Rowena now that I'm in Canada, but back home in the Philippines, I'm Weenie. So sometimes people call me Weenie, sometimes, but now Rowena here. But my first name is Maria. Uh, actually, I go by my second name because I have three sisters and four, uh, three brothers, so we're seven. And all of my sisters and I, our first names are Maria. So, so it was funny because when my two sisters right there, can you raise up your hand? There, I, I, rest, I, I told them you should be here because you're part of my <laughs> destiny. No, just kidding. So when they came, we stayed in one house when they came to Canada and we're all Maria. So they were applying for a job. And when the phone calls for interview, say, may I speak with Maria? Uh, okay, Maria who? Because there's three Marias in the house. So now uh, the only one that goes by her first name is that one, Jay. <laughs> so all of us go by the second name. So my journey with the Lord started when I was in grade four. Uh, I grew up in a Catholic family. We, I studied uh, from elementary to high school in a Catholic uh, school. And in our subdivision in Manila, there's a Baptist church and a Catholic church. But the Baptist church is more active in the community than the Catholic Church. And the pastor, um, so active that he goes to houses and um, he well, he introduced Bible studies in the houses. So my dad welcomed him and he actually allowed us to participate in their um, camp, summer camps and vacation Bible school. So, I was in the elementary then, and I attended my first summer camp, which is Encounter with Jesus. So, how many times have I heard Encounter today? Um, I don't know. Right? <laughs> when we were praying there, you were, Corey, you were talking about Encounter with Jesus. And that is the theme of the summer camp that I attended, the first one. And so uh, my brother, the second sibling, we were the ones that are at least, you know, older to join the camp. So I joined and I, you know, 
in the in the Protestant religion, it's a big thing to accept Jesus as your personal savior. So as young as grade four, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior. And I was already kind of filled with the Holy Spirit. So after the camp, I was so high that during that um, school year, the following school year after summer, I like to evangelize all my classmates. I've been giving them the pamphlets that has the, you know, the steps to, to um, accept Jesus as your Savior. So I was so excited. So that was my elementary days. And then high school, I stopped being, attending those kind of things. You know, high school is, uh, everybody in high school, teenagers became <laughs> different. So, and also that was the time when I started to babysit because the other siblings came along and I have to help my mom take care of the babies and while she does the chores. And also, um, we stopped having uh, nannies because when we were younger, like when we were probably four of us, we have nanny at home. But I guess because my dad is the only breadwinner, funds cannot afford it anymore, so I have to be the nanny. And then um, there were times when I cannot play with my with my friends because I have to take care of my siblings. But then my friends are so nice. They say, no, 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 you have to come. And when it's your turn to play or it's your turn to bat or kick the ball, we'll take care of your, your sister. So, okay, I enjoy that. So, um, high school is... Mm, so not that nice I mean but the thing is also this is a confession that I made I had a little um, should I say how should I say it? not really mad but I told my mom okay I am not enjoying my teenage life because I'm I'm doing this and but during high school, the fourth year, we had a retreat. This is the last year in, in school before college. So we had a retreat and that retreat made me realize what, what I did to my mom. I know I hurt her feelings. And so after the retreat, I went home, hugged him, hugged her and I said, I ask for forgiveness because I know I have been not a good daughter in those times when I was taking care of some of the little kids. So, and I told her, okay, mom, I'm really, really sorry. Now you can have more kids, <laughs> more than seven, and I will take care of them. So, so that's high school. And then, um, in the university, I, I wanted to become a doctor. And the reason why is I was inspired by my auntie, my dad's sister, because um, I was seven and she's already a doctor. She went to America and I think that's the time when I had this dream because I saw her like she's very she seemed successful to me at that yeah, I was so small but I can feel that I want to be like her so um, I took up medical technology as my pre-med but then again once I'm thinking there's six siblings after me, so I think I, we cannot afford, my dad cannot afford to um, get me a medical 
profession. So I just work as a medical technologist in the Philippines and um, I worked at a Catholic hospital uh, run by Archdiocese of Manila, Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Does anybody know Cardinal Santos? So during my university days um, and until I got a job, my dad always drives me. He drives me to school and to work every day. Uh, I'm very close to, I am a papa's girl, if I should say. So that was my life from childhood to adulthood. Now maybe you are wondering, um, did you have any boyfriend? <laughs> of course, yeah, I did, but um, it was a long distance, it became a long distance uh, love affair because he has to go to the States. And he comes um, every year, once a year. So that's just my life, boring, right? Nothing, nothing to be excited about. So, but then my quiet life was shaken one day when my dad was invited by my auntie, who was in the States, uh, and she married a Jewish doctor, and so that was January of 1989. My auntie invited my dad to come for her firstborn son, Bar Mitzvah. It was a very, it's a very special occasion, I guess, for Jewish tradition, the first, the, the son. So I cannot forget that day when he left. That was January 5th, 1989. Uh, that time, when he was going to the airport, I hesitated to, I don't know, I kind of like, I don't want to kiss him goodbye because I know he's going to come back. He's going to stay there for only two or three weeks just for the birthday party. So, uh, that was January 5, he left. And January 8, evening, Philippine time, while we were praying the rosary in our living room, because the black rosary, like the Legion of Mary, comes to the house with the statue of Mary, it was brought to our house. My mom was leading the rosary while she was praying the Hail Mary. Her voice was cracking and she began to cry for no reason. And then the phone rang what I remembered is I took the phone from my mom because she started crying and uh, I heard her, what happened to Nonoy? Because my dad knew me. And she started to cry more and she cannot talk anymore. So I took the phone. So that was my auntie on the other line and she was also crying. I asked her, what was it all about? And she said, Wala na papa nyo. In English, it means your dad is gone. So, I was so shocked that he only left three days ago. And now he's gone. I cannot remember what I said to my aunt. Um, I can't remember if I cried. And everybody at our house started crying because the, and some of the prayer, um, our guests who were praying with us, they also started crying. My brother actually started to throw things around the house. We were all shocked. Probably 
Our crying and wailing was heard outside our neighborhood that the neighbors came to our house. So we finished the rosary and informed. I remember somebody called my uncle and my sister over there because she's all, she was already married at that time and just had her first baby. Mm, yeah, that's another drama in my movie, her story. So, but I believe that everything happens for a reason because she got married early. At least my dad had a chance to walk a daughter at the aisle, right? And, ha and she, and he saw at least one grandson before he passed. My auntie said that when he arrived in the U.S., he was so excited to shop clothes for our, for our little. So, because that's his first grandchild. And um, actually what happened was, it was the night after the bar mitzvah. They, after the party, they went home and they were just talking at the, in the kitchen and suddenly he clutched, clutched his chest and fell. And my auntie performed CPR, ambulance came right away, but he didn't make it to the hospital. So he had a massive myocar myocardial infarction at age 52. So we waited for a week or so for my dad's body to arrive in the Philippines and we have no money. I mean, now I, I don't say no money. We have little money at that time. And uh, my auntie took care of everything. In the meantime, during those days of waiting for my dad's body, I was still in shock. I know I was like, I wasn't crying. I, I wasn't, I don't know, I can't cry at that time. And uh, I think my body probably cannot uh, handled the, sh I guess it was shock. Uh, I had a nervous breakdown. I can't remember what happened. The last thing I knew, I was, because I still went to work while waiting so that I won't be bored waiting at home. And when I woke up, I was already lying on the hospital. In, in the hospital where I work. Um, I don't know when this happened, but during that time, I remember it's like I'm dreaming that I went to heaven and Jesus was beside me and I was, we were standing, I was watching like a movie. <laughs> There's a big screen, I'm watching my life passing by, everything. So there, there are the bad things that I've done. I've seen it all. But Jesus was standing here beside me without judgment. He was just there beside me and I was like, Ugh, I did that, oh no. So, I was like, maybe that's where I got this movie thing, that I'm now in a movie. Like right now, we are in the movies and you're all there. And um, so, and I also remember that when I was in the hospital, I always want the rosary around my, my wrist. And I keep on telling the people that I want to go to the chapel, I want to go to the chapel, but they, they won't let me. And 
I don't know. I think every time I I I want to go out of the hospital, they would just probably put something so that to calm me down or whatever. So finally, the my dad's body came and. Um, I was also discharged from the hospital, but I am still taking medication. I went home, I know I was like a zombie. Like, I have no feeling, I'm just walking wherever. I know I, I have like a bodyguard with me. Somebody has to be with me all the time. So, um, but I've seen how many people love my dad, how many people, um, uh, love our family and friends and families provided for everything. You know, in the Philippines, when there's a, there's a funeral, uh, food is, you know, overflowing, and I don't know where those food come from. So, um, the burial of my dad. Uh, was not in Manila, but in the province, because I know my grandfather has a plot already there, so that we will not um, spend any more money. He let him use his plot for the cemetery. So my uncle, my my um, mom's sister's husband, took care of everything for the chapel, the burial, and everything. And then, when he finished preparing for everything, he went home, he took a nap because he was so exhausted, probably, or very stressed. And you know what? That was his last nap. He passed also. So, just a few days, my mom and my auntie lost both their husbands. And we were in the chapel, and there were two coffins. And my auntie, I don't know, they, these two sisters, they have both seven children. They lost their husband at the same year, close to each other. So, that's another drama there. And uh, meanwhile, the boyfriend, my boyfriend was in the Philippines at that time, but he was never to be found. I thought I would have someone, a shoulder to cry on, you know, during that time. You need someone with you. But he wasn't there. I keep on calling him doesn't have to answer the phone. And later on, I found out from his brother that he got a girl pregnant. So that's it. I'm done, I said. So I went to depression. But you know, in the Philippines, depression is not a big, I don't know. We Filipinos can handle depression, right? <laughs> We don't know anything about depression, so, but I know because I am crying all the time. Like, now I don't have any driver anymore. I go to work, taking the bus, and suddenly tears will just flow. So I said, what? What will I do with my life now? I, I'm so sad, I can't. I quit my job. I went to an orphanage. Uh, a friend of mine just happened to work there and they were looking for a, a secretary. So I quit the hospital. I said, I think this is where I might find my place. I was already third in my... 30s, I think, at that time. So I'm kind of at a loss. Am I gonna, what will I do with my life now? So I went to the orphanage and I stayed there. And one of the 
my duties there is to you know um, go to the bank and uh, give you know deposit the checks so while while I was in in the bank I saw uh, I saw a magazine a Kerygma magazine the Kerygma this is now the magazine that our Light of Jesus community publishes. But that is the first time that I've seen the Kerygma magazine and the cover caught my attention because it's, um, the picture is like hands that has chains on it. It, like chain, chain hands. So I felt that this is like me. I want to be free of sadness. I want to be free of of worries of whatever anxiety I have. So I, I I looked at the magazine while waiting, and I just I just got uh, I was touched by the magazine. So I asked the manager if I can take the magazine with me. Said you can cut the dis the subscription and you can subscribe. Okay, I got it. So, i uh, make the long story short. I, and I wrote the editor of the magazine because it touched me so much. So, okay, I sent the letter and I actually in, in, the, in the orphanage, I, I still can feel the you know, the sadness or whatever. So I asked God, Lord, what, what, do, what do you really want from me? Or, um, yeah, what am I here for there? So I want to know. And then, you know what? I left the orphanage. I went back to the hospital because I don't know where to go. But this is the thing. When I went back to the hospital, probably a few months after the orphanage, I left the orphanage, I saw another magazine. The same Kerygma magazine after a few months. And the letter that I sent was there. Okay. And that was a uh, September edition. September's my bed my birthday so I think it was for me it's God's gift that so I contacted that magazine and that's where the light that's how I came to the light of Jesus community so um, I attended the light of Jesus the singles the light of Jesus community we have to every Tuesday, we have a prayer meeting at the garage of, Doc, of Brother Bo Sanchez. So, and, um, but still, deep in my heart, I, I'm already, I know, I, I want to know, will I be for married or single, or I want to know my vocation. So I prayed, to God that show me, show me where will I go. So these things, because I always ask God for for signs or whatever, where He wanted me to go. I attended, um, I attended a, a vocation, like a search in seminar. So that I want to know uh, where I be a nun or single. So when I went there for one year, um, the last month that they are asking me, the nuns are asking me if you if you really want to be here, stay here for one week, and you will know. So at that time, I said, Lord, this is not. I guess this is not for me. So I didn't go. And then another thing. With the community, we had a gathering, and the the speaker asked us to put all our desires, our heart's desires, on the foot of the cross, and surrender everything to God. So in my heart, I want to surrender everything to God, but in my heart, I want 
to have a family. And it's so hard to give that desire up because uh, you know how when we when God asks you to surrender something, it's easy to say, oh yes, Lord, I will surrender. But like, J was it Jacob who is struggling or like wrestling with the Lord? So I did, I was wrestling with the Lord when the Lord is asking me, surrender your heart's desire to the Lord. Why are you still looking for someone when I am already here? I want to be with you. You and me. I said, Lord, so does it mean that I'm going to be single forever? It's so hard. I cried, actually, at that gathering. I cry, cry, cry until I, the Lord keeps on telling me, surrender, surrender. Finally, I surrendered. I surrendered. And peace. That was the first time that I felt the real surrender because peace came over me. Okay, I said, Lord, I surrender. You know when, when someone is pointing a gun on you and you, you do like that? That surrender, right? Because you know where to go, right? So I surrendered and after, see? After one week of that gathering, I work in a different uh, environment now in a in a in a drug uh, no uh, chemical company. I'm an administrative assistant there, so I'm going to work, taking the elevator, and guess. Who was at the elevator? <laughs> yes, he was there, but we were schoolmate in high school. Uh, I mean, elementary. We were schoolmate, but we don't talk to each other. So he said, oh, I, oh, I know, I thought I know you. And then he said, uh, what time are you going home? He said, oh, okay. But I have to go to a prayer meeting because that was Tuesday. So every Tuesday I go to prayer meeting. I don't do anything else but that. So he said, okay, I will come with you. So, so make the long story short, that was February 1993. We met at the elevator and then April, the same year, we got married civilly <laughs> because he has to go to uh, he has to go to UK to do some studies. And I don't want to be alone again. I don't want to be left alone again and do this long distance. So we got married and July 24, we got married at church for the blessing. So we are married for 26 years now. And we have two daughters, Kate and Nikki. And Kate is now at uh, Mazakowski doing her practicum in nursing. And Nikki, my youngest daughter, is uh, graduating next year biology and she wants to be a teacher. And so that's my story. And since then, um, we never stopped serving uh, Light of Jesus community. When we came here, we, we became the coordinator. And the Lord has taught me to always surrender my fears, worries, anxieties, problems, and there's so many things that happened in my life and 45 minutes is not enough so i have to stop now <laughs> no um i just want to end my testimony with a letter of saint paul 
to the Corinthians chapter 13. Right? It's 12 o'clock. <laughs> Greet one another with... Oh, finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Thank you for listening to my drama. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Maria, <laughs> Winnie, <laughs> Rowena, Andres. I would just like to ask one question. Arnie, yes. you got anything to add to that? Do you agree with whatever she said? Because I saw you, you were so intently listening to her, and uh, you never did this. You were always like, hmm. So I guess uh, everything's uh, anyway. Uh, thank you. So for those of you who are looking for a park, still you know you are single or anybody there? Surrender. Go to the elevators. <laughs> then surrender.